Hi, I'm Emilia Nieminen, the maker of Inna Moratta Dolls. Welcome to the second part of my hardcap wig making series. This is the wig we'll be making throughout the series, but you can venture out in any direction you like after learning the basic techniques. If you missed out on the first part where I show how I make tight fitting wig caps, you can check it out here. In this part I'll show you how to get started making washable hard cap wigs using hot glue. Note this hot glue technique works best with natural fibers such as alpaca, mohair, wool or silk. The heat from the glue gun might melt artificial fibers such as saran, so they aren't exactly compatible. Tools. First, the hot glue gun with the safety covering stripped off the nozzle so you can use it to spread the glue. If you're new to hot glue guns, I recommend a small one with the longest nozzle you can find. This is a really versatile tool and I even use it as a miniature hair curler in a later video. You can also see me using it for leather sculpting here. Check out the link. The most crucial tool in my work is sharp scissors, and I cannot live without my fist cast ones. This is not a product placement, but it should be. <laughs> Sponsor me, Fiskars. <laughs> it's the only Finnish brand I'm loyal to. And I've dragged these scissors all around the world with me. They even have their own sharpening tools, so after dulling them and cutting this hair, I can just sharpen them and go back to cutting silk. You also need a brush. I'm using an old toothbrush with silicone bristles and a silicone pads in the handle that do come in handy as the silicone is the one thing that doesn't stick to the glue. I also use a silicone mat for weft making and I got this pad from a dollar store at the Daiso in Japan, but you can use any non-stick silicone surface bead a lid or oven mitt or whatever you can find. So I have a wig cap done in the colour matching the doll's skin tone from the previous video and the hairline sketched out. I'm using a brandy red alpaca locks here as fibre. So we have two ways to go, making wefts and melting them on or gluing the hair directly on the wig, which is faster and what I generally do. I only make wefts for partings and close to the hairline, so I'll show you the weft making when we get there. Now we can just go fast and dirty because it's satisfying to see results. So let's get started. Take a section of hair. You want to keep these as thin as possible to still give it, get an even coverage because the layers do add up to a lot of hair. Brush to align the hairs and cut it even. I usually make the bottom weft a bit thicker, so don't take this as a general volume example quite yet. The beauty of hard cap wigs is that you can choose the direction of the hairs. For an open hairstyle, it's best to start at the back of the head. And for a ponytail or chignon, you would just start at the crown and work towards the hairline. I'll add a bit of clue and be careful to stay within the hairline when I spread it all thin. I place the hairs directly on the warm glue and hold them in place while I add more glue to the roots to make sure each hair is held firmly in place. This is essentially what you do with the wefts, except I'm skipping a step of work putting it directly on the hard cap wig. If you mess up, you can just reheat the area and remove this section. Question. Should I make a video exclusively about messing up and different rescue techniques? Let me know in the comments. I usually do the next tier in parts, starting from behind the ears and working in a line to connect them. Note that for free flowing hair, the glue soaked area should overlap a bit, not to show any wig cap underneath. If you're making an updo and want to keep the hair thinner, you can leave more space between the wefts. If you're making a short hair wig, and I find those to be the hardest, you want as many layers as possible and tightly together as possible. I really love alpaca fiber. It's my favorite material for doll wigs because of its length and luster and the thinness of the individual hairs that works so well in miniature. 
For this wig, I want the hair to taper naturally, and the easiest way of doing that is just to cut the hair to right length and only use the natural tips. I'll save the rest for a later project. Let's pick a thin lock of hair for the next section. Oh no, I just realized she looks like a balding heavy metal dude. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> like before, I add glue and spread it thin. Then I add another layer of glue on top. Sorry for the focus being all over the place. I don't always remember to check the camera while I'm immersed in my work. The thin layer cools really fast, so you have to be quick. I do burn myself sometimes, so this is why silicone tools are great. Stupidly, I do have fancy tools, but I kind of prefer to use my hands. I guess my fingertips are quite hardened from all the abuse and abuse. Note that the way I'm doing this is that I'm pressing the nozzle down to melt the glue and then pushing it away from the hair to keep everything tidy. You don't really need to make the glue seams quite this wide, but I messed up with the glue a bit <laughs> and want to make this an even line. The fix is to melt the glue area wider to make it all tidy again. If you want to make a wig that is meant to be washed and brushed, braided, etc., you do want to make the glue seams this wide to make it extra sturdy so none of the hairs get pulled out. While adding the third tire, you can start pondering how far your hair parting will come and begin changing the direction of the hairs for the next layers. With a hard cap wig, you have the option of swiping the hair behind the ear or letting it flow down covering the ears. Brush the hair between the layers to check that everything is staying properly in place. It's easy to fix it now, but much, much harder later. This wig will have visible ears and a side parting, so I'm careful to start directing the hairs in a way that they will flow behind the ear. I will also build this side higher up to the crown of the head, as the side parting will be on the left side. Sorry for the changes in lighting. It just got dark outside. I'm studying Japanese in the daytime nowadays, so my doll work has to wait until evenings. Let's go to the next layer. Since this is just boring repetition until we get to the hairline, I'll speed it up. As you can see, the hair kind of looks gelled slick in the glue seam areas. Note that different hair colours react differently to the glue. So test your fibres before starting. Black and some natural darker blonde colours don't usually change colour, so I recommend starting with those. Some browns turn almost black in the glue contact, and one white alpaca I have turned slightly purple and utterly transparent, showing the wig cap underneath. That fibre is not really suited for visible hairlines, so I pick a hairstyle after I do the material test. One way around this is to glue the hairline fibres underneath the cap and then pull them over the edge, but that creates a unnatural, kind of hat-like look. I much prefer a wispy hairline that really looks like it's growing out of the scalp. But this script is getting way too long, it's late, so I'm gonna break the video in half here and show you how to make partins and the natural hairline in the next video. Please be patient, thanks for watching and see you next time.